Town where I did dwell, the fisher's girl I loved her well. I courted her for many days. She stole from me my heart away. Upon a stranger's knee, and tells him what she wouldn't tell me. The reason is, I'll tell you why, because he's got more gold than I, but gold will matter. Silver fly. In times of need, he'll be as poor as I. Every verse cried, "Sarah, oh Every verse cried, "Say, oh dear!" I wish, I wish, I wish in vain. I wish she was a maid again. A maid again, she'll never be. Apples grow on an orange tree. And let's face it, that's never going to happen. Apples on an orange tree. That's <laughs> Low Butcher Boy from the forthcoming album Lightweights and Gentlemen. And uh, with me, well, these two certainly didn't come from the same tree. Could oh, be the, God, the apple no. and oranges, the, the fruit staple <laughs> of, of the folk scene. Tom Harland and Dave the Angles Gimble. Welcome to the Garden Sessions. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, it's been an interesting couple of weeks, but we've got some pounding music ahead. Tom, who is our featured artist this week? Oh, this week our featured artist is uh, We Andy Chung. Andy uh, Chung. Fife folk legend, uh, an occasional denizen of the Royal Oak. <laughs> and Angles, regular features... Well, they're all uh, they're all the same as every week. We've got the folky news, we've got the letters bag, we've got Dave's angle as always. And uh, what is your angle this week then? I'm not telling Ooh, you. Oh, I thought I could trick you oh. into parting. You haven't asked for a while. You've been very good. Uh, one <laughs> You've of these just been days. slack. 
<laughs> also, welcome along to listeners from Radio Britfolk for the second um, show that's going to be broadcast back. through then Radio Britfolk dot uk, um, and it's episode twenty six. Twenty six for everyone else. A dram in the bothy. Next tune, uh, Angles. Uh, the next tune we're going to play is Laurie Watson 3 off the album 3, and it's uh, Colon Riddles. Colon 3. Colon 3. I think is the name. You of pedant. It is. It, it, no, it's on the album. <laughs> Quite clearly says it on the cover. I do have to concede the point to him on this one, Tom. Uh, but the song's called Riddles. <laughs> There lived a lady in the north country Lay the bent, tay the bonny broom And she had lovely doctors three ba la 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 There also lived in tay the north Lay the bent, tay the bonny broom A noble knight, O oh, Muckleworth ba la 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 Yen next when it was cold and wet, lay the bent, tay the bonny broom, this night he come, tay her ladies yet, ba la 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 la. The eldest doctor, she let him in, lay the bent, tay the bonny broom, and sealed the door with a silver pen, ba la 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 la. Says if you'll answer me question three Lay the bent, tay the bonny broom Tis then fair maid, I will marry ye Fa la 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 Oh, what is louder than a horn Lay the bent, tay the bonny broom And what is sharper all than a thorn Fa la 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 and what is longer than the wheel? Lay the bent, tay the bonny broom, and what is deeper all than the sea? Fa la 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 la. And what is greener than the grass? Lay the bent, tay the bonny broom, and what's more wicked than her woman was? Fa la 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 la. Thunder is louder than a horn Lay the bent, tay the bonny broom And hunger sharper, all than a thorn La 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 And love is longer than the way Lay the bent, tay the bonny broom And hell is deeper, all than the sea Fa la 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 Envy is greener than the grass Lay the bent, tay the bonny broom And the deal mere wicked than her woman was Fa la 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 As soon as she the fiend did name Lay the bent, tay the bonny broom He flew a wall in a blaze of flame oh, Angles, what wow. happened to the song? Uh, uh, that's <laughs> What's going the, uh, on? <laughs> That's that's the blaze of flame, Jack. Very abrupt end Suddenly in there, Laurie. Stopped. Sure. <laughs> I'm still trying to, to straighten my head. It's out. a it's a great tune, though. Angles, all Laurie calm Watson. in the bothy. Angles, Laurie Watson three. Laurie Watson three are uh, Laurie Watson, Fiona Young, and Innes Watson or Barry Reed, hmm. depending. I don't know depending. Both on what, excellent musicians. Yeah. Um, and they sort of they got together in October 2004, and are an exciting young band celebrating the best in Scottish tradition combined with their own contemporary sounds. Ooh. Yeah, it is a, quite a unique sound. I actually. saw Laurie Watson performing on the uh, Celtic Connections stage there at the Festival Club. And it's a yeah, very good album great. as well. Indeed, the album, again, is called Colon 3. Or 3 <laughs> for people who aren't ridiculous. Pedants. Jack? Tom? It's news! 
It's folk. What is it, Tom? It's the folk in you. Mm-hmm. And the folk in you is brought to you this week, as ever, in association with Paddy Bart's Wee Folk Club. And every Sunday night at the Oak, we've got the Wee Folk Club at eight thirty. An intimate venue, thirty seats, acoustic. It's a great night out. We've got some fantastic musicians and uh, singers. Every Sunday night, do come along. Eighteenth of March at the Wee Folk Club. It's Kieran Halpin. Kieran Halpin is a singer-songwriter with 17 albums to his credit and a string of hit songs, many of which have been covered and performed by other artists throughout the world. Thought-provoking lyrics and memorable melodies and a percussive guitar style that tells you he means business. His songs will make you think, laugh and cry all in one evening. Sounds good. That's at the Royal Oak in Edinburgh, 01315572976 for bookings royal-oak-folk.com Moving on with the folky news an event that I'm looking forward to is I believe it's a, it'll be sort of Edinburgh's equivalent to Celtic Connections is Edinburgh's Cayley Culture Ah, the Cayley Culture Festival Festival, Brilliant. which runs from the 24th of March to the 15th April 2007 In the five years since it began Cayley Culture has easily become an annual fixture in many people's calendars Its mix of music, song, storytelling dance and poetry makes for an exciting three weeks Cayley Culture brings together a large number of contributors from all over Edinburgh and beyond for a real celebration of all that is wonderful about traditional arts in Scotland. With more than 30 contributing organisations, Cayley Culture proudly showcases local talent alongside international acts. And at Cayley Culture you can take on Christy Moore, Pete Bog Fairies, the Wrigley Sisters, Catriona Mackay and Chris Stout, the Anna Massey Band, um, among many others. Mm. Moving on with the folky news... Our last show, episode 25, was the first since we teamed up with Radio Britfolk. Listeners through Radio Britfolk will already be familiar with their setup, yeah. but our existing listeners may not be. Radio Britfolk is dedicated to promoting the traditional music of Wales, Ireland, Scotland and England. It is a volunteer, not-for-profit project coordinated by professional musicians. Fully licensed with PRS, that's why we've been able to play so many pounding songs we wouldn't have been able to play. In the past, late. patron of Radio Britfolk and longtime standard bearer for the new and original music um, scene is Andy Kershaw, and he's going to explain why Radio Britfolk and shows like the Garden Sessions are important. As mainstream radio becomes more and more homogenised and bland, there is all the more need for um, radio which brings you the kind of music that you wouldn't otherwise get to hear. You know, my old and much-missed producer at Radio 1, producer for myself and uh, John Peel for many years, John Walters, always used to say that our role was, as the BBC, not to give people what they wanted, but to give people what they didn't know they wanted. And if Radio Britfolk can do that, then it will be making a very valuable contribution to our cultural lives. So that's Kershaw and Britfolk, (laughs) and you can find out more at radiobritfolk.co.uk. Lau's debut album, Lightweights and Gentlemen, is released on Monday the 19th of March, and you are invited. A formidable union of three of the finest and most innovative exponents of modern traditional music in Scotland today, indeed, Jack. Mm. Uh, Chris Drever on guitar and vocals, Martin Green, piano and accordion, and Adrian O'Rourke on fiddle. Um, And that track we heard was Butcher Boy at the beginning of the show. Um, and Jack caught up with one third of Lau, Chris Drever, on Sunday and asked him how the project came about and what people can expect from the album and its launch. Well, we've all been playing together for a long time and I guess we all have a slightly off kilter approach to what we like about music, so it seemed sensible. We're all, you know, we're kind of on the same page, so it seems like a good idea. What can we expect at the album launch? You can expect a free beer. And uh, free beer. Yeah, a free beer. A free beer. <laughs> and uh, you can um, expect a little concert. I don't know, maybe half an hour or forty-five minutes, and then a bit of milling around. And for those who are who are in, in, interested in a party, I suspect we shall move further in the town afterwards for a few more tunes. That's right. And if people want to hear any of the loud stuff, is there any way they can go to listen to some of the music at the moment and get an idea of what it's all about? Uh, www myspace.com forward slash low music L-A-U music and there's some fantastic stuff on there we'll be there and um, hopefully other people can come along for the record it's free to get in it is free to get in and it's at it's uh, it's at 8 o'clock thanks very much Chris we'll see you next week cheers, cheers. 
So that was Chris Drever talking about the album launch of Lightweights and Gentlemen, Lau's new project. Mm. We'll all be along, we'll co- be covering that. And I hope we'll also be along to Edinburgh's Cayley Culture Festival, or some of the events in that at least, uh, give some reviews on some of them. So Lau's album launch of Lightweights and Gentlemen um, is on Monday the 19th, that's at the Bongo Club at 8 o'clock, as Chris was saying there. And keep up to date with all the latest Folky News at gardensessions.co.uk forward slash news. And that's the Folky News. Mm-hmm. I, I want to know, Tom. God, I want to know. Angles. I already know. The official Garden Sessions download chart. The official Garden Sessions download chart. <laughs> At 10, it's oh, down 5 for Four Chords and the Truth with Old Men Fall in Love. At 9, it's the first of our re-entries from Laurie Watson 3 with Cape on Tree. At 8, it's down 5 for Four Chords and the Truth again with Bonnie Susie Clellan, The Wedding Reel, Hannah's Reel and MacArthur's Road. Well, I think to Bonnie we boy. Well, I think to Bonnie we boy. Well, I think to Bonnie we boy. Titans, Tama Joy, the Bonnie, Susie Clowns, Tabby Burns, and Dundee. Bonnie, Susie Clowns, Tabby Burns, and Dundee. All the dulcet tones. <laughs> Chris At Silver. seven, it's up one for the Laurie Watson three with When Maggie Gangs Away. At six, it's down four for Sinead Connolly. <laughs> with Eileen Oak. <laughs> that was an evil snigger. At five, it's the second of four re-entries. Martin Boland with Dreams in Blue. She wears a coat of many colours Everyone the brightest you Shimmering silver and burnished bronze That's only how it Cause when she dreams To her it seems she dreams in blue It's about time that Martin was back in the chart At four, it's a re-entry for Claire Mann and Aaron Jones with Saints and Sinners Good to see that back in the chart as well Yeah At three, it's down two for Andy Chung with the Penny Falls Which means a new number one A new new number number one. one Don't tease me At two, it's a re-entry for Andy Chung again with the Wee Room Ooh. I think that's the first time it's been higher the in the top, chart than the Penny Falls. But the official Garden Sessions download chart number one. Who is it? Oh. It's a new entry. Ooh. It's new the entry. first time in the chart. Straight charts. in. Jim Malcolm, Lock Inside. Oh. Mm-hmm. Come the winter. Cold and dreary brings a hawk to him fray the high street tail when worst night hails high are in the walking side. Come the spring, the land lies we day till the sun shines. It's a cheery day brings a bloom for our June's bright are in the walking side. A jeep and yet seen the scatter Oh, the peasies over the maca When a boon the tawny oak lights Are in the walking sides And the heron he comes a-creeping Through the dashes to green and dreeping To the pool, one wily through the slide If you ever had reason to be here And on his season come and try The barley he bring Run the fire on Loch Summertime, the fish are lopping, the bars in, the bunnies coping, swallows flee, feed on to lean tight, are in the looking sight. By the autumn, the pink 
sun wagon Play please of the moors are hanging Simon through the sergeant's bed fights Out in the looking sides A jeep and yet seen the scatter and well deserved I would say <laughs> for the new Jim number Malcolm one has achieved the gold standard in folk <laughs> the Garden Sessions official number one as ever uh, impeccable taste from Garden Sessions listeners Jim Malcolm lock inside I may be mistaken but Angles is it not that time it, it, yeah it's that time Ooh. time for Dave's Angle I understand it's a, what was it a true folk classic a true folk classic it really is uh, this week's angle is Aaron Gobra it's a traditional tune sung here oh, by yeah. Dick Gochen the legend that is Dick Gochen Indeed. <laughs> Travelled this country for money's and pay. I've travelled through Ireland, Scotland, the law, and the name I go under's both and over. One night's an old tricky as I walked in the street. A saucy big pool is a chance for to meet. He glowers in my face and he gave me some joy, saying, When come he over? Well, I am not a pat, though in Ireland I've been Nor am I a paddy, though Ireland I've seen But somewhere I a paddy, that's nothing at all For there's many a bold hero from there and go bra. You turn to Scotsman as soon as you're here You left your own country for breaking the law And we're seizing all stragglers from here and go brow Oh, and were I a pat, and you knew it were true Or were I the devil, then what's that to you? Were it not for the stick that you hold in your paw Then I'd show you a game played in here and go brow A 
black thought that the hell of a About his big body, I made it to twist And the blood from his napper, I quickly did draw And paid him stock in a trust for their That daft rascal, he's killed the police And for every friend I had, I swear he had tore It was terrible hard times for them and Brad But I come to your wee boat that sails and falls And I packed up my gear and I steered for the north there we'll say all drinky, your poor lessons are And the devil gang we ye says there go back So come on, ye young people, for the you are from Don't give a damn to what place you belong I come from Argyll and the Gillens of But I'm there to get up in Colter and go back Legendary Dick Gohan there, um, singing Erin Gobra. Um, brilliant, brilliant song. I'm so pleased that Angles has chosen this um, as this week's angle. Dave, what is your angle? Mm-hmm. Well, uh, the tune starts off with this guy explaining that his name's Duncan Campbell and he's from Argyle, um, uh-huh. and he's travelled all over the country for you know, all the way around. What Scotland. period is this in Angles? Uh, this is probably Victorian. I don't know for sure. Right. Or early Victorian. Um, Hold on. So he's a, he's a Scottish guy? He's, a, he's from Argyle, yes. Okay. Um, he's Duncan travelled Campbell. around Ireland as well, all through Ireland, hmm. as well as Scotland. And the name he goes under is, is Aaron Gobra. Just because um, he spent a long because time. Because he spent and... a long time travelling around Ireland, yeah, exactly. Mm. But um, he's in Edinburgh one night, and he's walking down the street, uh, and yeah. all of a sudden he sees this policeman, a saucy big polis. <laughs> <laughs> a <laughs> saucy had big Had he polis. just been in a, in a <clears throat> fish and chip shop? <laughs> no, I think it's sort of, he's got a bit of sauce, he's kind of rowdy. Oh, uh, what, the policeman? Uh, yeah, the policeman. Right, okay. And uh, you see, he, the, the policeman comes up to him, glowers right at him, starts sort of giving him some lip. He just dropped a cigarette kind of on the pavement. No, he'd done nothing. Which would by this bring point you a large all. fine in Edinburgh, by the way. If you don't live in Edinburgh, <laughs> yes, we have crazy environmental fines if you drop a cigarette. <laughs> and they could chase you. They were allowed to chase you around the street as well. <laughs> Take them for a run up the crags. <laughs> it's quite frightening. Um, but anyway, so the policeman glares in his face and starts giving him some lip and saying, um, "You know, when did when Council when did you get well off the spent. boat?" <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm still in the the litter yes. police. Anyway, but yeah, he said the policeman says to him, "When did you come over on the boat?" Yeah, Irishman. Yeah. Um, and uh, it was a bit racist and presumptuous it, well, exactly. of him. Exactly. The saucy yeah. big police. What's, quite what's rightly, his nationality got to do with anything? It, well, yeah, indeed. Quite rightly, some offence is taken. He says, "I'm, I'm, I'm not a pat, though. I, I've been, you know, I've been around Ireland. A pat. A pat. A, pat. a co-pat. Like an expat. Uh, no, not an ex. It's um." Do you need? Do you want me to explain this if, for you? If you can, like a pat of butter. Right, a pat uh, is a pat on the back. A term that refers to uh, pat uh, shot. usually a, a, a higher social class in the Irish sort of middle classes. Um, usually, people descended from the English uh, from, uh, from the Anglican and Methodist right. Church. Where are you getting this from? I'm getting this from research, Jack. <laughs> okay. Long hours and dusty tomes. I, I'm not. A, I'm not a paddy, though. Though I've been in Ireland, I've been around, you know. Um, 
and he says, but even if I was, you know, what 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 does that matter? You know, good point. There's, there's loads of you know, I'm a good guy, it, it, and there's loads of good guys is, in Ireland. It's not so. relevant, but he isn't Irish. He's Scottish. We yeah, established that at the he's start. Saying, of it, but he's saying, even if I was Irish, you know, what difference does it make? Yeah, and the policeman says, I, I know you're Irish. Look, I, just to look at you, he says, by the by the cut of your hair. So just to, you know, the, by the look <laughs> of you. What? Absolute twaddle. What kind of hairstyles did Irish people have in those I don't days, think it's I actually guess. literally, see, he actually literally says, he actually literally means by your hairstyle. I think he means, you know. Cut of your jib. Exactly. Yeah. The, by the look of, um, <laughs> but all you Irishmen turn to Scotsmen as soon as you get here. He's kind of saying, ah, you all, you all come over here and pretend to be Scottish because you came over from Ireland because you're a lawbreaker. Not the ones basically. I've been So it, basically the cops <laughs> just saying they're stealing our benefits and they're No, they're come saying over they're coming over, they're coming over here to escape uh, to escape the Irish law which is bearing down upon them so they're they're convicts who've run away again some offense is taken he says no 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 that's 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 not right you know that's not true that's not fair I'm not a criminal there's not a single bit of criminal in me and if you weren't holding a, gri- a great big bludger with which to beat me to death innocent to I would take guilty. you to the task cop can't it. do anything mm. here he's not done anything yeah and he the quite sensibly says like stand on. he says we might have an argument about that if you weren't holding that great big hitting stick <laughs> hitting <laughs> stick hitting stick <laughs> he's toned this down for a family audience I think. a big bludgeon in other words <laughs> yes basically um, a blunt instrument but then, in the next verse, he just totally goes back on that. He obviously, something snaps in him, and he just goes loopy. Uh, <laughs> Who goes loopy? The cop or Aaron Gilbride? Aaron Gilbride. He just goes, he just goes <laughs> totally round the bend and attacks the policeman um, with a great big wadge of blackthorn. Um, oh, cider? I don't think it's a bottle of cider. No. I don't what think he it, bottles then? the cop. I think it's probably like a, a, a stick of blackthorn or something like that. He's maybe robbed the policeman's stick. No. Um, and um, basically beats him uh, until until the cop's dead. So he beats a cop to death on the streets of Edinburgh. Yes. He justifies the fact that he's not a criminal by committing a murder. Right. Right. Um. I, don't, I don't see the logic in it. Right, um, so the policeman threatened to arrest him, and then he said, "No, that's not going to happen," um, and just and, uh, and, and, and beat him to because death. he's not a criminal, <laughs> and then beat him to death, thereby becoming a criminal. Yes, right. Yeah, Aaron Gilbrad's got a bit of a screw. This. He, he, it makes Surely. no logical sense, and he does it in the middle of the street. As I feel I said, from so until the point that he beats the cop to death. Can we go on with this? Okay. Okay. So, loads of people come running round the corner who've obviously just heard the screams of this dying policeman. Yeah. And, uh, and they say, you know, catch him. He killed the policeman. Get him. He's going to face the letter of the law. And Aaron Gilbrad but it's Gilbrady. ducks it. He runs. He runs down to the fourth and he gets in this boat. He wings it. And pitches off, punts off, whatever he's doing, however he's controlling it, rows off. Right. Uh, off into the distance. Rows off into the... Into the distance, yes. Rose, or however he's going to be there a while. I don't know how he does. So he's it. just going to have a fife. He may well be. He uh, may well just be going to like maybe just going to Cramond and hoping the tide's out. And he sort of heads off and tries to to, to leave this trouble behind him. And basically, uh, he sums up in the in the in the last verse of the song by saying, um, "So young people, beware that um, it doesn't matter. You should mm. pay no heed to to where it is you're from. It doesn't really matter. You know, I'm from Argyle, but." Uh, it never did me any harm uh, being called Aaron Gobra, although obviously. So, so basically. Because <laughs> he committed yeah. murder over it. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, it turned him totally insane to be uh, yes. called a different name. Dave, what's your right with the moral? The moral basically it's saying that, um, it, in the well, the first couple of lines of the last verse anyway, it kind of sums it up by saying, look, it, it doesn't really matter where you're from. Mm. Necessarily, mm. no. It's a nice song that says nice <laughs> things about about about. It doesn't matter where you're from and all that kind of kind of wow. stuff. It's got a dark edge to it, though. A dark one from Gog, but it's a good song. Dave, is that your angle? <laughs> yes, it is, Jack. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dave's angle. <laughs> we get better every week, um, but it's time for the letters bag. Oh, yes. We need to get a jingle of Frank for the letter, Spike. We do. Anyway. Tom, um, you, you got the first letter there. Dear Garden Sessions, I'm a regular listener to your show. I particularly enjoy Dave's Angle. Everyone just does. Heard it, and love to report on the handball at New Year. Um, I have a question regarding the website. 
I recognise everyone on your line of pictures and on the top of the page, but not the gentleman with the large bushy beard. Is he a musician? And that's uh, from Mac in Inverness. Gentleman with a long bushy beard, and the, you're the website expert, Jack. It could only be one man. Ah, Paddy Bort. Paddy Bort. Paddy. Eberhardt. It is a, it is a wonderful Paddy beard. Bort. Angles, have you got a letter there? I do indeed. Uh, it's from Kate in Swansea, and she writes, Dear Garden Sessions, I love the show, but was wondering if you'd heard of uh, another show called Folkcast. We have indeed. We have, we have, we've listened. Um, it's a great show and another constant source of brilliant folk music. The only thing is, they're challenging for Angle's crown. Challenging, challenging for Angle's crown? Are. They're, they're, well, Kate thinks they're challenging for my crown. The <laughs> segment, the story behind the song, is a veritable Bubba's Angle, packed full of knowledge. <laughs> Is Dave worried his position as folk guru may be usurped? Do you think Bubba could steal your crown? No, I'm not worried. I mean, it's um, they're doing a different thing. I mean, they do the story behind the song. And Bubba does well, the, the, the history of, the one of, thing, why, of where the song came from, the history the of the people behind the song. The thing which I notice is different is that they let Bubba away with just running riot. And, and Bubba will just gives you his story and they take it as read. We question you, Angles. You do. You, you yeah, don't Angles, get to... You're well questioned. Well, we're, we're doing the story within the song as opposed to the story behind the song. Exactly. <laughs> and don't forget, Folkcast, if you want to listen, it's folkcast.co.uk. It is a wonderful podcast mm. on folk music. Uh, last letter, Dear Garden Sessions, I'm a regular listener. Love the show. I was extremely pleased to hear that you've teamed up with Radio Brit Folk, to which I also regularly listen. I haven't heard Wardy Alive by Malinky in several years. Thanks so much for playing it. I've been rediscovering the Last Leaves album this past week as a result. Mm. Keep up the good work. Great That's album. From James and Troon. Yeah, and Troon. Mm. I'm not Bonnie sure. Troon. I, I, I think probably Three Ravens better album. That's my preference. Yeah, a bit of controversy. I think they're both very good albums. And That's there's what so we pay you for. Oh, I didn't say either of them were, well, was, was, ba- was, was, was bad. They've I become the, the, the Scottish equivalent of the Legion Leaf and Unhalf Bricking. Mm. Got a that constant sort of controversy status, yeah. without perhaps as much psychedelia yeah but anyway it's time for this week's featured artist ah um, yes the we, Chung Masters we felt it was time to bring on the veritable tour de force he's obviously one of the audience favourites so uh, yeah I caught up with him on Sunday and I do mention within the interview that he's number one at the time but it's because it was Sunday he's no longer Jim Malcolm's at number one now oh. But here is this week's featured artist, Andy Chung. Anywhere, Camel 
let you call a nut now. Hi, 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 hi. Assembling instruction. Assembling Instructions, Andy Chang, who joins me now downstairs in the Oak, this week's featured artist. How are you doing, Andy? I'm fine. You are um, one of the most popular um, musicians on the Garden Sessions. Indeed, as we speak, you're still number one on the Garden Sessions download chart. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the song you just sang there, though, which should be a, a treat for Garden Sessions listeners who have heard nothing but the penny falls for <laughs> weeks on it? Hi. Assembling Instructions actually started off uh, in, a, in a wee practice room in Nidgey Street, yeah. just uh, up for Bannermans, between Bannermans and uh, Nicol Edwards in Edinburgh's Nidgey Street. We used to practice there uh, several times a, a week with uh, Axel Campbell from Pipe Down and a chap called Gary Gardner on drums. And uh, and then it was a electric kind of sound to it, you yeah. know. Um, you know, I had that chorus going, no other lyrics. I used to get complaints about the fact that I never finished anything. <laughs> uh, I started. So eventually, in uh, 2001, it was uh, I booked into the Wash House Studios yeah. in Crawford John and um, decided to finish the song. That was one of the songs I decided to finish. Various kind of bits and personal memory in there of growing up in Fife, coming over to Edinburgh, having what was known as uh, the old uh, jazz cigarette. <laughs> or two the first time known. has been known <laughs> <laughs> and not making it to yeah. the Cambalachia Club in, uh, which was on at um, the White Swan in Morrison Street yeah. Spider's Web it was about three of us trying to get it together to go one Thursday night we were really looking forward to it but never made it because uh, we had partaken of one or two too many at that time I suppose and I think few, there's a few musicians who would understand where you're coming from <laughs> And then the, the, the Nighthawk was a Chinese uh, takeaway mm. um, in Union Street, 
just around the corner from Ferries, right at the top of yeah. Leith Walk. Um, and they used to do the most amazing special fried rice. So we had to uh, set off the special fried rice, which that was probably too bad. To that took presents <laughs> over the corner of the club because we couldn't make it any further. <laughs> Andy, you're um, you're a fifer, but obviously um, you've got roots in your family of Chinese. Um, how much do you find that the that side of things affects the music that you're performing? Well, there was a there was a friend of mine actually said an interesting thing about the Penny Falls that uh, she said she could hear the thread of the Chinese melody yeah. in there, which the old cliche goes, it's the pentatonic scale, mm. five notes. I mean, it's 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 in the writing, I think, mm. as well. You know, even though I write predominantly in in Scots or English, or Scots inflected English, mm -hmm. uh, you know, a lot. Of the, I think a lot of the lyrics, the concepts come from, there are a lot of ideas, you know, come, th come from Chinese philosophies, mm -hmm. and Eastern philosophies, as well as, you know, obvious uh, things like lifetime experiences growing up here yeah. in the West and being born here and being born in Scotland. Mm -hmm. Um, oh, we're going to move on to your second song now, uh, which is called Colours That Shine Like You Do. Um, do you want to tell us a little bit about why you've chosen to play that for us? Uh, I, I just sat down one day and I was wanting to write a, write a love song. One of the most difficult kinds of songs to write. Oh, certainly. How do you do it? You know, kind of thing, what, what do you do? You know, what, you, what you're going to talk about? How, what are you going to say? You know, is it... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, and it's advice. You know, I heard a song... Um, by a chap called S.E. Roji mm. uh, from the Sierra Leone that a friend of mine, uh, Richard, was promoting in the Highlands when he was living in this country. And uh, S.E. Roji, who was a famous palm wine, what they call the palm wine guitar player mm. uh, from Sierra Leone, and he had a song called Advice to Schoolgirls. And, it was an, and basically, <laughs> the, the, the advice is basically to keep on the straight and narrow and, yeah. uh, and be good to yourself and everything will work okay you know <laughs> so that's it that it's got that kind of thing about it as well that you know when I was thinking yeah. about writing the song and obviously I had um, you know a particular person in mind at the time that I wrote it for and uh, and I've you know that that, that again is, is going back a few years to the late 90s sitting in Lawson Place and right I've got to come up with the songs and I wrote that about the same time as The Penny Falls I mean, well, let's hear that now. This is Colours That Shine Like You Do. And I, 
is for you. Won't go by. Beautiful heart. You can try, 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 try. Glimpse of vision now of what can be. We're moving seasons in our lives. Little old by circumstance and over. Colours That Shine Like You Do. I'm still sitting with Andy Chung uh, downstairs in the Royal Oak, this week's featured artist on the Garden Sessions. Um, now, you stopped performing uh, um, earlier on this year to start work on a new album. Um, a lot of people were quite dismayed to hear that a lot of your regular gigs had been cancelled. What brought that about? I just needed a change of scene, Jack. You know, needed a, needed a wee break, eh? And... Uh, I mean, the places I play in, <clears throat> I've got to enjoy playing in them, yeah. to play them in the first place. And then all of a sudden, uh, you, grow to, you grow to love the place, become great pals with the, with the folk that drink there, mm. all the regulars. Um, and I just think for me, at the time, after after seven years uh, playing in the Hebrides Bar in the Scotsman Lounge, um, I just needed a break, you know? Yeah. And I said that to... Uh, to the boss and uh, he said oh, okay, everybody, needs, everybody needs a change I need a change of scenery I needed to work on some stuff um, you know pull myself away from from regular haunts mm-hmm. for a, at least for a wee while well, you've yeah. been you, I mean you have been gigging uh, you've been doing a lot of stuff up north I have in the past couple of months how have you found that I've found it fantastic yeah. oh b- b- up the Baden of Stress Bay region <laughs> <laughs> in uh, in uh, Newton Moor uh, yeah. The Glen, up in Aviemore. Uh, I played up there last year for the big Highland Gathering, mm. uh, the Tartan Army Highland Gathering up there. Uh, fantastic. Um, a certain team lost, uh, which which uh, <laughs> certainly proved popular on the Saturday, uh, late Saturday <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> Great atmosphere. Um, Inverness. I've, I've played the Gellins, and I played McCallum's up in Inverness, uh, and. Up in Dingwall at the National Hotel, mm. and I've been over to Sky recently as well. Uh, so you've been on a proper folk odyssey. Ah, uh, certainly. Uh, and again, it's it's about kind of being inspired by people, you know, and be made to feel welcome, I suppose. Uh, and certainly, uh, if I've seen the hospitality firsthand, it's excellent. And I hear about the local gossip up in Portree, what's happening yeah. with who and who, and uh, after the last couple of years, uh, the, the journey been there, they're coming back again, uh, very special. Well, we're going to go into your final tune in just a moment, um, Melville Castle. It, it, it was actually um, Melville Castle, Willie's getting to Melville Castle, was, uh, I'd actually heard years ago as a youngster uh, watching the Songs of Scotland, mm. and there was a chap called Alice MacDonald who was singing it, and then years later I ended up uh, meeting Alistair MacDonald a few times, supporting him in concert, and um and then I was down about, must have been about four or five years ago, for uh, Wales versus Scotland, uh, the football, uh-huh. in the Millennium Stadium. And of the game, I won't say very much, but we all had a great time. Uh, and coming up on the bus, um, I was sitting next to one of the Queens of the South, Diane, Diane Small, and and, uh, and I was asleep for most of the journey up there, eh? back up to Edinburgh. It was about 13 yeah. hours or something like that. But they had all these uh, videos playing and uh, Tommy Scott uh, and they had uh, an old video of Songs of Scotland and I was saying to Diane oh that's uh, that's um, Alison MacDonald oh, I've, I've met him before and of course the song it was the melody yeah. that that uh, really struck me loved the melody and then of course they discovered that the Corries had done a version of it mm-hmm. um, and then I got hold of the lyrics and uh, uh, there's interesting things about the song that I, I don't know who wrote it. I thought it was Burns. It's not. I don't think it is Burns. 
Um, but I was sitting in the Bailey one afternoon uh, in Stockbridge. An old stockery. There's a sign, and it's for um, for some some Bailey in Edinburgh, some provost, I think, mm. uh, or somebody, um, Willie Creech, William Creech, and it was a Burns night happening, mm-hmm. and it was Willie's a war. So Willie's a war. I don't know if that's a continuation of. Yeah. Uh, of, of we'll we'll get the garden castle. sessions research. Willie's a war, and I thought. If I ever decide to make a wee film of it, you know, and it's, there's got to be a, I mean, it's a good Gay Gordon's kind of, yeah. kind of uh, uh, rhythm going on there, and I've seen it happening in action yeah. when it's been when I've been playing it. Uh, all of a sudden, it's like folk are kind of doing the doing the the Gay Gordon's and last tune from our feature artist this week, Melville Castle. Thanks very much, Andy Chung. Cheers, Jack. Thanks very much indeed. Cheers, mate. Cheers. To the test, <laughs> out of puffy, we roll back the carpets in the bothy and did have a little gay gardens. The parameters of the bothy do prohibit it took dancing us the first to an extent. Or so to work it's, it's quite restricted. Yeah. It took us the first minute or so to work out how you do the gay gardens, but we managed to, we managed to get it between the three of us. Um, now, we did say in there, I did promise Andy that we'd put the garden sessions researchers on to who wrote that song there. Willie's gone to Melville Castle. And Angles, what Angles. did you come up with? Well, and the song is uh, said to be 
18th century right. uh, traditional 1700s. Scottish song from the borders. There's a few lines in it, especially in the chorus, which are quite similar to that of When Maggie Gangs Away, which we got from the Laurie Watson 3. Yeah. Mm, and they credit song. the lyrics Good of that song. song to James Hogg, who was yeah. uh, a Borders Scottish poet. Borders poet, 1770 to 1835. Angles, so, what? How do you know this? <laughs> Be, I I just I I look them up, Jeff. Okay, okay. I research. So I sit in a studio with Rain Man. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so so he's 18th century as well. Now I'm not entirely sure. We don't know. I, I don't know for a fact, but it could be that that he wrote it, or it could be that one is an adaptation of the other. So there's connections to the James Hogg stuff, but we're still not quite sure. We're not quite sure yet. The garden I sessions will researchers find out have failed. If I can. Oh. It's just still just. If the garden sessions researcher fails, everyone will fail. <laughs> I'll I'll try. I will try because and find I can out. believe no stone is left untouched. Could it almost be worth a CD to any lucky listener? <laughs> yep. Um, it could be. It could very well be worth putting out a question because if the garden sessions researchers can't find it, have you any idea who wrote that song? Willie's gone to Melville Castle, or is it the James Hogg connection, or is it Burns or? We don't know. You could win a CD, Tom Fernie, the Journeyman. What a CD but, it is as well. It's but I'm putting a prize on this competition, right? It's a good prize because it's a good question. It's a tough question, mm-hmm. but you, the competition will keep running until I find out or the Garden Sessions research team find out. That's how long you have. And you could get be to a keep week, the CD if you two, find out first. Three. He's suggesting it could take that long to find out. I may find it quickly, I may not. Tom, there could be a folk odyssey in this. Mm, an Angles <laughs> academic odyssey. And the quest for the Willy... What's it Ghost called? of Melville Castle yes. passage. <laughs> <laughs> Podcast! Thank God it was getting silly. Yes, <laughs> limping towards the end. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us for yet another Garden Sessions episode 26. Also to listeners at Radio Brit Folk. Um, and that's radiobritfolk.co.uk and we are gardensessions.co.uk podcast at gardensessions.co.uk if you want to get in touch with us Tom, the website is full of wonderful features is it not? Oh, many there's uh, the reviews section um, Indeed Regularly updated reviews We'll be bringing you uh, reviews of Laos at debut album launch yeah. Lightweights and Gentlemen We'll also be covering, hopefully, the Cayley Culture Festival in Edinburgh Indeed Angles, what's on next week's show? All the usual stuff. There'll be another Jeez. angle, uh, and there'll be the folky news again. There'll probably be another letters bag. There'll be another featured artist. Just two Tuesdays away. Don't forget, you can win Fernie CD. Tom Fernie, the journeyman. Podcast at Garden Sessions. UK. If you know who wrote Willie's Gone to Melville Castle, we'll see you next time. I'm from me, Jack Foster, Tom Harland, David Angles Gimble. Take it easy. Catch you later down the folky trail. Cheerio. Mm-hmm.